Hey guys, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So Shopify has a lot of different APIs and each serves a specific purpose. In this video, I'll show you what they are and when to use which. Should be a lot of fun. And if you want to learn or work together, links in the description. Let's get started. All right, so the API is basically how you talk to Shopify programmatically. If you want to update the card without reloading the page, there is an API for that. If you want to build a custom app that reads incoming orders, and then, for example, sends them to your bookkeeping software, there is an API for that. And if you want to display your products on a self-checkout in a coffee store, let's say, there's even an API for that. So the API is the bridge between your code and the Shopify store. And it's basically how you read data, how you update data, or get notified when something changes. Okay, now that we roughly understand what an API is, let's start with the easiest, the Shopify Ajax API, that we can use right in our Shopify themes. This is mostly used to make a theme and a storefront interactive without reloading the page. Using this Ajax API, we can do things such as request product data, like in this example here. We're fetching all the details for our coffee product, and now we can see all the different data fields like the featured image, the description, the handle, the ID, the price, and so on and so forth. We can also manipulate the card. We've already seen an example of this when I click the Add to Card button. But obviously, we can also do it programmatically. That's what happens behind the scenes. So with these lines of code, we would basically clear the card and then also await the response. So this is going to be the new card. And the new card contains zero items. Now we would have to update our HTML to reflect the changes. But it's already or it already happened behind the scenes. So after the next refresh, you can see the card is now empty. But we could have also done it without reloading the page by updating the HTML. Predictive search is another area, so we already start getting results while we type. And using Ajax, we can also reload entire sections or specific content using the section rendering API. I also have a fully dedicated video on that, so I'll link it down below if you're interested. Now, the last two things mentioned worthy regarding the Ajax API are number one, it's completely public, so everyone can use it. And that's also completely okay because it only exposes data that's public anyway, like the product title, the product description. And we can also just perform actions that users can perform anyway, like clearing the card, adding products to cart. So there's nothing critical or sensitive. And then second, this is a REST or REST style API. It means we can communicate with normal HTTP requests, get and post, and we always get all the data back. Yeah, so even if we're just interested in the product title, for example, we still get the whole data set. And this is completely different when using a GraphQL API, as we'll see in one minute. All right, then next, let's have a look at Shopify's admin API. This is probably the most important API and also what people think about when they hear Shopify API. So this API lets you access all the store's private data, products, customers, collections, orders, just about anything. And that's also the reason why it's one of the core APIs used in almost every Shopify app. Now, one of the first differences and something that confuses a lot of beginners is that the admin API cannot be used from the front end. So you couldn't just have a button to, let's say, load the last five orders from a customer and then run some JavaScript to make that work because any code that runs on a website can be seen, edited, or completely manipulated by a user. And if someone had full access to the admin API, it would give them full read and write access to all the store's private data. So they could delete products, they could uh, change descriptions, they could read customer data, they could wipe all your inventory, so they could mess with the store pretty badly. So that's why the admin API can only be used inside apps. The correct flow to make an example like this work would then rather look as follows. The user clicks the button and requests the last five orders. In the background, we make a request to our app server. This can be a normal HTTP request using JavaScript, for example. But only our server has the secret API key and is allowed to request this private information, like all the orders from Shopify. So then Shopify returns that information to our server and our server can return that information to the user. So in this case, the user could mess as much with the button as they want, but they would never find out the secret API key. And they also couldn't mess with our server logic. So this way it would be safe. 
Now setting up a full app with authentication API keys is out of the scope here. Maybe not even what you're looking for right now. But if you want to practice making the first requests to the Shopify admin API, you can install Shopify's GraphQL app. This app already has the necessary API permissions, so you can start writing GraphQL queries right away. This also gets us to the next point because the admin API is GraphQL based. And if GraphQL is new to you, I have a full video just on GraphQL, which I'll also link in the description, highly recommend it. But the main difference between REST and GraphQL is that with GraphQL, we can request very specific fields. For example, just the first three products, but only the ID and title. And this is what the result would look like. So we wouldn't overfetch as much as we've seen with the REST API, where we got all the product data, even we were just interested in the title. So GraphQL is much more efficient, especially for larger stores or more complex apps. Now, there are also things to consider such as rate limits. You can only make so many requests per minute or per second, but that's better explained in the full video on GraphQL. Okay, now another concept you should have on your radar is webhooks. Technically, these are not an API, but they live in the same world as the admin API. So it makes sense to cover them here. And webhooks are more like an event system. So they're very useful if something changes. For example, let's say you want to create a new invoice every time an order is created, then it would be super inefficient to pull the Shopify admin every minute just to check if there is like a new order. And it would be much better to just get notified by Shopify. And that's what webhooks are for. You can subscribe to certain events. Now, when one of these events occurs, Shopify also sends you some data about the event, the webhook data or event data. But sometimes the data might be incomplete for your specific use case or for what you want to achieve. So it's not uncommon to make a follow-up request after receiving a webhook to the GraphQL admin API, just requesting the fields, the extra fields that are missing. And then you also get this data back. All right, the next big API is Shopify's storefront API. This one is interesting if you want to use Shopify's core features like viewing products or using the shopping cart outside of themes in a completely custom environment. So you could display products on a self-checkout or a smart fridge or a completely custom mobile app where you normally wouldn't have access to routes like slash cart or slash products because they might simply not exist in your custom environment. So instead you would push data back and forth using GraphQL. And in the final step, the user still gets redirected to Shopify's checkout to complete the purchase. So in a setup like this, Shopify kind of becomes your e-commerce engine. Now, what else you need to know about the storefront API? Since the user is making requests directly from the front end, there is a public part that exposes non-sensitive data, like product information, for example. But the storefront API also has a secret part if you want to request things like meta objects or meta fields. And then you would just have to proxy your request through a server again, just like we've seen before. Also important, unlike the admin API, the storefront API doesn't have a rate limit, which makes sense because on your custom app or custom website, you could have thousands of visitors during a flash sale, let's say, and then it would be bad if they had to wait for products to be displayed. The only thing that the storefront API cannot do are admin level actions like deleting products, changing information, or anything along those lines. So it's purely designed for building custom storefronts and not for managing the store. Okay, now the very last area to mention here are Shopify functions. And functions are not APIs. Functions are more like modules that let you override specific parts of Shopify's logic. For example, if you want to create a custom discount logic, so they're almost a special type of app, and we will cover them in a different video. But in that context, you might come across terms like the discount function API or cart transform API. But these are not traditional APIs in the sense of the admin API or storefront API, where you could like request data via HTTP requests and such. These are really just the interfaces that functions use and you can't use them anywhere else outside of functions. All right, and I think this makes a pretty good overview of all the different APIs. So we have the Ajax API in themes, admin API for apps, storefront API for custom storefronts, webhooks if you need to react to certain events or changes, and then functions have their own internal APIs or internal toolkits. I really hope this is a useful starting point and let me know if you got any questions or what you want to see next, comment section, and if you want to work or learn together, links in the description. I would love to. 
And yeah, have an awesome day. I'll catch you later.